And next up, a session produced by our underwriter. Please welcome Horacio Rosansky, President and CEO of Booz Allen Hamilton, here with New York Times Senior Correspondent Eric Schmidt. Well, Horacio, we heard a little bit this morning from one of the government's leading experts about artificial intelligence, AI. I want to ask you, though, as somebody in, coming in this from the private sector, but who has a close relationship with the Pentagon, tell us your views now, some of the perils and the promises of AI as, as we move into this sphere. So thank you for that question. It's great to be here this morning. Um, AI is a transformative technology. Uh, we, it, it is clear already and it's going to transform all aspects of life, including national defense, national security, and many other areas. At the same time, like all transformative technologies, there's unintended consequences that we need to worry about. And because we've learned a lot about the introduction of new technology in the last 20 years, I believe and I hope that with AI, we actually have an opportunity as a society to set this up in a way that we minimize those unintended consequences. Give us some examples of what you mean by that. What are some of the specific cases that are kind of at the cutting edge that maybe some of the viewers here might be familiar with and, and how you're addressing these, how you're engaging some of these risks? So the work that Booz Allen is doing on AI suggests that there's two parts to this question. One part is where will the technology go, say, over the next five years? And the second part is what will we trust it to do? And on the first part, um, I, it's, it's incredible. Uh, take... Um, Speech recognition. Uh, it's already uh, computers understand human speech uh, as well or better than humans. Um, in fact, uh, there's new work that's being done that is uh, helpful to people like me with an accent where actually they're actually going to start to understand me even. <laughs> um, but over the next five years, uh, we will be able to take out our wearables and we will have a conversation where I'm speaking Spanish and you're speaking in English, and with the help of technology, we will actually have a live conversation where we each hear each other uh, in the language that we need. So that's the speed at which this is moving. That is the, the kind of promise. By the same time, token, um, are we going to trust it to do it? You know, at one level, uh, if I'm, say, in Buenos Aires and I'm ordering a steak, and, you know, the, the real risk is that the temperature of the meat isn't going to be right? Absolutely. If the country is negotiating world peace um, and a government official has to have a detailed conversation with an official in another country, that's where trust really comes in. I think we, if we'd had this conversation five years ago about, say, social media, I think most people would have looked at it and said, well, most of the social media benefits are pretty evident, and it's only in the last few years where we've seen some of the malign influences uh, that we've seen Russia, for instance, interfering with American elections in 2016. Who will be responsible or who is going to be working on kind of mitigating some of these risks? Should it be left up strictly to the private sector or is it going to be a combination of the government intervening as well, perhaps Congress per passing legislation? All great endeavors in this country uh, have come at the result of uh, public and private partnerships. And I think AI has to be a key area where we have a national strategy, where government is setting the foundation and the conditions on which this technology evolves and where the private sector then operating against those conditions optimizes the use of capital and, and figures out how to get the most out of it. But I go back, I mean, the key question is going to be not what can the technology do, what will we as a society trust it to do? Now, in many ways, AI, the race for AI has been compared to an arms race for the two main competitors being the US and China. Do you view that as an accurate way of looking at this, this kind of this this view, or is it more multilateral, certainly more international in business scope? One of the interesting and important things about this technology is unlike other technologies, the scale that you need to develop it is actually lower. The same is true of cybersecurity and many of the digital technologies. And so uh, it, it, in an adversarial sense, in a competitive sense, we will face many competitors and many adversaries. And unlike other technologies over the last century, uh, we don't have a 10-year, 20-year commanding lead. Uh, we are doing outstanding work. Uh, Booz Allen sees this every day in investments that the government is making on artificial intelligence across all of the major domains, but especially defense, national security, and healthcare, where the promise is incredible. Uh, but we need to collect all those efforts together and keep pushing forward. 
Well, you talk about the cooperation with the military, and one of the things, obviously, the military is looking at how do you automate in the battlefield situation. Gen Secretary Mattis, Secretary of Defense Jim Mattis, had said you're never going to take the human operator out of that equation, particularly when it comes to lethal operations. And yet, if you're talking about cyber operations and you're dealing with a foe that's operating at the speed of cyber, when, how are you going to deal with that, having a, both the human being the ultimate decider when you pull a trigger, but operating in a space where the machines are operating faster than a human can react? So, so take this maybe to a level of, of something we all have been uh, worried about and heard about this morning. Maybe that's a, an easier place to start, which is um, driverless vehicles. Mm. So cast your mind to Atlantic Festival 2025, and now uh, you, you sat there, you went through all of it, you visited the Booz Allen tent next door, if I can put that plug in. <laughs> uh, but it, in 2025, it's actually a hologram. So you're done with that, you pull out your wearable, and you're gonna call uh, for a driver, it's for a, an Uber, or a Lyft, or an Amazon taxi, and uh, a vehicle shows up, and there's no driver. How do you think through that problem? First question, do I trust it? Uh, is this car drive like a 16-year-old, or uh, like a highly experienced commercial driver? You'll make a decision on that. Second question is, does this car reflect my values? And what do I mean by that? Um, I went to school in Eau Claire, Wisconsin, but I learned to drive in Buenos Aires. That's quite a difference there. That, you gotta the, you tease know, that out the, for the us. The notion right? of what a yellow light means <laughs> is actually very different in both of those places. <laughs> and, and you actually have to think about, you know, how do you want that to work? And then the third question, uh, if you want to sort of uh, quote President Reagan, you have to trust but verify. Let's just say you get into, a, on, the, on your way home, you get an offender bender. Are we going to be able to qu query the car as to why that happened, or is that technology a complete black box? Because today, that's evolving in that way. So, so if you think about it from the perspective of, of just a consumer, that's sort of one level. Think about it from the perspective of government, having to make decisions mm -hmm. about to what degree do I trust an AI to tell troops on a battlefield where the adversary might be? It, to what extent do you trust an AI to shut down part of the electric grid to protect it from being hijacked? Okay. Those are the questions Booz Allen's clients deal with. And again, it goes back to creating trust at a level, like those, at least those three dimensions, that really make sense. And, and assess for us what you, how, how are we doing right now, both from the government effort and overall? We hear about China's you know, all, all in approach to this is the U.S. right there? Is it lagging behind? And where do you see it spinning out maybe five years from now? Where, where, we, where do you see us heading? So I'm very optimistic and very hopeful. Um, what we are seeing is uh, Booz Allen's clients all over the federal government, uh, especially, but also in the private sector, are making significant investments in these areas. And they're making investments at a scale that we did not expect to see happen for the next three to five years. So we really are moving in this area, uh, and, and, and they, again, they span the spectrum of ideas and of questions. I think the real challenge is going to be how do you bring all of that together into focus? Secretary Mathis called for a national AI strategy. Uh, we very much support that. I think that makes a lot of sense. Look in your crystal ball. What might, as you look out and you see the applications of AI playing out, what do you think may, we may see in that five year, maybe even a little bit beyond, that may surprise people here in the audience today? Um, so, uh, I'll, I'll do something that, that you personally, uh, I think, would, would appreciate because you spend a lot of time uh, reporting from war zones and, and embedded with troops. Uh, convoy is driving down a, a hundred mile road from one city to another and say there's lots of things around the convoy that are trying to protect uh, our soldiers. Uh, there may be a satellite image, uh, there may be a drone or a helicopter with a camera. There may be an intercept of information uh, that we have. Uh, right now, there's a set of analysts back home trying to look at all of that and make sure that they know what happened. AI has the potential to enhance that by going back, say, six months on every image we have on that road and say, well, hang on, that looks like somebody dug there. That looks like somebody did something bad there. And, and having that knowledge would make our troops so much safer. And that technology, while not here immediately, is quite possible if we, again, uh, develop it and develop it in a way that we can trust it. Yeah, great. Fascinating. 
Please join me in thanking Horacio for this interesting event. Thank you very much.